All right, on to some politics now. And former Vice President Mike Pence dropped out of the 2024 presidential race over the weekend, saying he has no regrets. Pence struggled in the crowded GOP field. Former President Donald Trump still leads the race while he fights his courtroom battles. Robert Costa is in Washington with more. Bob, good morning. Good morning. I was with former Vice President Mike Pence months ago in Iowa when he announced this 2024 presidential campaign. But months later, it became evident to Pence and his advisors that he was just not getting a hearing from Republican voters, especially those Trump supporters who can't forgive Pence for his role in certifying the 2020 election. After much prayer and deliberation, I have decided to suspend my campaign for president effective today. Former Vice President Mike Pence suspended his campaign this past weekend in a speech in Las Vegas. This is not my time. With a nod to how hard it has been to gain traction in a primary race so dominated by his one-time ally, former President Donald Trump. We always knew this would be an uphill battle, but I have no regrets. The only thing that would have been harder than coming up short would have been if we'd never tried at all. Pence's decision might be the beginning of a shakeup of the Republican presidential contest, potentially prompting others to assess their own campaigns and whether they should follow suit and consider rallying around a Trump alternative. Look, I think in, in the end, it just means this race is narrowing, which everyone said that it would. But Trump rivals like former New Jersey Governor Chris Christie are in no rush to leave or to push others out. It's not my place to tell people when to get out. Sources close to Pence say he is unlikely to quickly make an endorsement. Everybody that leaves seems to be endorsing me. But Trump called on Pence to endorse him, despite having pressured Pence relentlessly to overturn the 2020 election results. He should endorse me. Uh, I chose him, made him vice president, but people, people in politics can be very disloyal. And some news this morning in Iowa, a new Des Moines Register NBC poll shows Trump well ahead in that state with 43 percent support among likely Republican caucus goers. And it looks like, Anne Marie, a race for second place at 16 percent with former Ambassador Nikki Haley and Florida Governor Ron DeSantis tied. So let's talk about Mike Pence. I mean, on paper, he should have been a formidable opponent. He's got the Donald Trump kind of cred in that he was his vice president and up until the very end was pretty supportive of everything that Donald Trump did. Um, and he also, you know, has sat in the second right next to the big seat as vice president. Why was it so difficult for him to gain traction? Former President Donald Trump, when you're out on the campaign trail, it's so clear that he still has this base of support. And within that base of support is antagonism in some respects toward Pence, even though Pence, as you said, was a loyal soldier politically at Trump's side for f four years because Pence didn't do what Trump wanted in and around January 6, 2021. That he has suffered the wrath of Trump supporters ever since. And Pence believed he could still cut a path to the nomination running as a traditional conservative. But ultimately, that wasn't enough to overcome the January 6 issue at this moment inside the GOP. You know, whatever you want to say about Mike Pence, one of the sort of ways in which he defines himself is by his faith. Um, and evangelicals seem to like him. So which candidate could benefit the most from Pence's supporters, do you think? I'm keeping a close eye right now on Nikki Haley, the former U.N. ambassador and former South Carolina governor. She is rising, as I noted, in the new poll in Iowa. She's rising in the eyes of many major donors across the country. Does Pence try to use his political capital to give her a lift? Maybe not now, but sometime early next year, just before the Iowa caucuses. Pence could have a real impact uh, on who comes in second place in Iowa, especially if Haley and DeSantis are so tight. Mm -hmm. um, and so I'm going to dust off a kind of an old question that resurfaces all the time. And it's about Trump and his legal woes. And the reason I keep dusting it off is because there's always another chapter. So now we have, you know, a number of his co-dependents pleading guilty, uh, you know, in uh, in Georgia, and they're probably going they're going to be testifying against other co-defendants. Um, we have this gag order in place, and in another case, are we seeing any of this chip away at his significant lead? No, and it's not chipping away at his 
commentary, to say the least. Mm. Uh, even as these DC, a DC judge reissues a gag order, and as a New York judge uh, tells Trump to make sure he cuts out his comments about the court staff uh, and fines Trump for his public comments about his alleged comments about these court staffers, Trump continues to talk. Trump continues to be very critical of those who are prosecuting him and those who are overseeing these ongoing cases. Uh, and Trump's voters are looking at all of this as somewhat of a blur politically. I mean, you have five ongoing cases, two from the special counsel at the federal level, two in New York, one civil, one criminal, plus the case in Georgia, the RICO conspiracy case. All of that, when I talk to voters, seems like a blur to the Trump supporters in particular. Now, some others worry it could be a weight on Trump's shoulders next year. That's why they're eyeing Nikki Haley and Ron DeSantis and Chris Christie and others. But for the most part, it has not cost Trump. If anything, it's fueled his supporters to stick by him. Wow. All right, Bob. Thank you very much. Thank you.